All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and uh, we're talking, of course, about the uh, Sony situation and the movie, the interview, and uh, the capitulation by Sony and theaters and the reaction to the capitulation. Joining us is Kyle Smith, New York Post columnist and movie critic, and he's written a great piece, Sony Pictures Proves Hollywood is a Land of Cowards. Kyle, welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, it, it, we, for, before we start, uh, we both just looked over a statement from the, um, the Motion Picture Association of America. Uh, as you put it, uh, strongly worded. Uh, any surprises in there from their stance? Not really, but I would like to see uh, more of a backbone from the Motion Picture Association, from Sony, from the theater owners saying, we will not allow this to stand. We will not allow North Korean tin pot dictators to push us around. We're going to show whatever movies we want to show. And I want the President of the United States to get up there and say the exact same thing. Look, the President should have said, I will make sure that you, the theater owners, are indemnified against any terrorist-related activities that occur with, with respect to this movie. There's no way Americans can allow this to, to, to stand. No, absolutely. And uh, Chris Dodd, who, uh, former senator, uh, who uh, uh, put out the statement, uh, talked about the fact that uh, the Internet is a powerful force for good, and it's deplorable that it's being used as a weapon, not just by common criminals, but also sophisticated cyber, ter cyber terrorists. We cannot allow that front to be opened again on American corporations or the American people. Um, so when, when Hollywood pulls this movie, when, when, so, when uh, Sony pulls the movie, first they tell the, uh, the venues you don't have to run it, then they all pull it, now it's gone away for good. Then another movie that they wanted to recommend for replacement, that goes away. What on earth have we opened ourselves up to here? You know, we, we're giving the terrorists a veto. It's, it's clear that we're, we're taking our orders from Pyongyang and, uh, you know, the fat boy who runs North Korea. Paramount Pictures didn't even suffer any threats. Paramount Pictures yanked uh, a few screenings of Team, Team America from, I think, four small theaters right. nationwide and said these theaters, no, do not show this 10-year-old movie that's already been shown to millions of Americans. That's ridiculous. I mean, this is, uh, this is you know, forced censorship. I just don't see how they, I unless they reverse themselves very quickly, unless a Netflix comes and says, uh, I'll run it or we'll run it, and I don't even know if that's going to happen. I, I just don't see how they, 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 they fight the next threat. And no matter what the next threat is, I mean, we expect this, first of all, from Muslim terrorists. So say Muslim terrorists say ISIS issues a statement, puts out a video, and says if you keep singing the national anthem at ball games, we're going to kill people either inside the stadium or arena or when they, when they leave and go to their cars. So are they going to stop singing the national anthem? I mean, this is just as, uh, will be unending. The KKK could, us, could that, put out a statement tomorrow saying Django Unchained. Oh, no, no one can see Django Unchained anymore because it's offensive to us, the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, where, where does this end? We wouldn't allow our own government to censor movies like this. Why are we allowing one of the most ridiculous, uh, tyrannical governments on earth to tell us what we can show in our movie theater? And I hear people, and, and maybe what the worst part of it all is, not only what Sony did, but you would think there would be universal. I mean, George, Hollywood is basically silent. I mean, George Clooney. I, I, and to correct me if I'm wrong, you know a lot more than me. He's been a lone voice out there saying we can't allow this to happen. He, yeah. he started a petition and he couldn't get any signatures on it. There's been some others. Judd Apatow put out a strongly worded uh, statement. Jimmy Kimmel supported Judd Apatow. I, I think at the entertainer level, you see uh, a lot of outrage at Sony, but at the corporate level, uh, where the decisions are really made in the in the C-suites, uh, those are the people who are totally showing themselves to be jellyfish right now. Uh, yeah, and, and so, I mean, my, my, my question is, uh, Sony uh, uh, has allowed this to happen. Um, they're being threatened again, reportedly, with, uh, with even more. I don't know that, that nothing is specific. Uh, Sony's not commenting on that. Um, what, what's next? What do you think is next? Look, this is not Sony's problem. This is all of our problem. This is America's problem. The president needs to get up there and make that clear to the American people that we are all united against terrorist threats. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I got a feeling, uh, you know, uh, they're not going to do much more than sanctions. Uh, uh, at, at least that we know of to, to North Korea. And then, of course, this goes maybe a little bit beyond your realm, but we're all Americans and we're all uh, vulnerable when, when st the, the hackers are still threatening uh, uh, bigger, something bigger is coming, even bigger than Sony. And, of course, there's, there's worries about our infrastructure. If they could hack into, you know, and, 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 and this Homeland Security has said for, for years now that our infrastructure is vulnerable to cyber attack. There have been cyber attacks. Maybe they figured out a way to close down our electric grid, and Sony will seem like an afterthought. Well, God forbid. I, I hope the IT people who are in charge of the electrical <laughs> grid are taking a real close look at, yeah. at any vulnerabilities in that system. Apparently, the Sony hack occurred with some widely available software you can get on the Internet. It didn't even have to be a, a particularly sophisticated system that did this. Uh, all right, what about the, the uh, holiday season, the movies? Even though they're not showing that movie, do you think movie goers will still be hesitant to put themselves in a theater? Well, I'll tell you what, the box office for this Christmas is going to be weak because the product that's out there is weak. There aren't a lot of great movies 
Uh, this movie was, was not going to be a huge hit anyway, but it, it would have brought in maybe some college kids. It, the movies that are out there are, are Annie and The Night at the Museum and Unbroken. They're, they're not getting good reviews yeah. and they don't have a lot of buzz and I don't think they're going to draw crowds. And then people are going to turn around and say, well, it's, it's because of the uh, tepid, We shouldn't make that uh, inference. Okay, fair it, enough. It's hard to say. Uh, Kyle, great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Kyle Smith, New York Post. Read him there, folks. Uh, he's uh, their movie critic as uh, well as a columnist. Uh, okay, so uh, Gordon Chang, uh, who knows uh, so much about China and North Korea and the access between them and everything else, he'll be here to talk about the uh, whole situation next right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Don't go away.